things to do. So they're not as apparent as they were in the polling unit. Yes, they become more sophisticated. There are different approaches. One approach does not cure everything. That is the essence, and this is one of the approaches. And we took other approaches, liaisons with security agencies. We did that. We did a lot more in terms of, um, of voter education and telling them, look, if we give you four, five, ten thousand, when you spread over ten, ten, uh, four years, a term, a term of, a, of a governor, it amounts to nothing to you. And you cannot hold people accountable. You lose the right to complain when you when you sell or by vote. So these are some of the issues. That is just only one measure. I, it's not my problem if people have concentrated on one of the measures that was done or they've made that one measure very, very controversial. So that's the essence of what we're trying to say, what we're doing. Oh, brilliant, because um, uh, you, you are trying yes. to raise um, yes. an, an issue on this. Yes, I want to say that who are the buyers of these votes? <laughs> Obviously, if you look at it, who are those buying these votes? It's the political parties and the candidates. And so, I think INEC should look into that. Most of our politicians, the political parties, are to blame for this vote-buying saga, as it were. Secondly, there is no monitoring process for the election financing, the campaign funds of candidates. Don't forget that INEC says that it is working with the EFCC to try to check campaign no, funds. There's, not, there's nothing on the ground. Has happened, nothing has happened. What has happened? No, has happened. There were, there were reports, cannot categorically say no, There were reports that in the Kitty ex experience, there were reports that over 18 billion were shipped in bags through aircraft. My allegations. Yes, with the, the journalists, those who covered the election, they said so, that there were a lot of money brought into a Kitty and there's no check. So we have a problem on our hands. And I think uh, prior to the election, there should, be move, there should be regulation of monies that moves into states. And how those, particularly with the connivance of banks, some of the banks, like we had during the time of the 2004, 14, I guess, in the, the same equity or so, or so when, when the, there was the allegations of Obanikoro moving money Senator Banikoro moving money. Those issues were never investigated properly. And those people who were involved were never prosecuted. So we still have the same problem on our hands. So I think, just I, I agree with Dr. Uh, Ashiro, that there's a need for a holistic approach to this question of vote buying. It covers the issue of security monitoring, movement of funds during election and before and during election. Okay, because you actually need cash to be able to do the hatchetry. And of course, if... Have you been through the process? No, I've not been to... Uh, but I've been a, a monitor, a monitor, election monitoring, monitoring uh, groups in the past, even though right now I'm not very active in that aspect. Now, I know that you have to, you have to watch out how monies are moving to the state, then overnight lodgement by banks. These are, the, these are the process by which this money are moved in to make sure that the hatchet is done. And then again, you'll find that most of the party agents and the party leaders in the world, in the unit, in the, and all the, they are the ones that get the money. And they know how many voters are in their unit, in their ward, and those, the names. In fact, they do a lot of house-to-house -house checking to converse for votes. And they know the people who are going to vote in the election. And so, they, they, they pay money and ensure that they just tell them, go tomorrow and make sure that you vote for us. Okay, so these things are still going. Let's, let's move away from yes. that uh, while we're hoping that uh, the issue of vote buying will be looked into uh, with more uh, uh, zest to try to solve that issue. But let me get back to you in Abuja, Mr. Osazeuzi. Did you envisage this challenge of the card reader, especially just uh, before these elections? Uh, INEC had upgraded the systems, including the card reader. So what went wrong? Did anything really go wrong? There was a widespread failure of the use of card readers, not from the reports we got from the media, from uh, civil society, and certainly from our monitors on ground. There are one or two issues. I remember General uh, Lagunjoy mentioned that. He said, he said, look, the card reader did not function as well as it should, and uh, immediately that card reader was replaced. So I don't know how widespread or what reports you have. It's not, uh, these are not the reports that we have. The carriers performed very, very well, better than at any other time mm. since the introduction in 2015 general elections. And okay. uh, where there were challenges, they were almost certainly immediately replaced. Mm. 
and uh, where they could not be fixed because there was a roving team that was around to check mates and to do troubleshoot where this was the case. And spares were also uh, available where, for any reason, just like any other technological device, like your smartphone, like your ATM, sometimes you go to the ATM, you ask for money to be dispensed. It says it has been dispensed, but you don't receive any money. So there are certainly failures, but the failure rate is completely minimal when compared to the total number of uh, card readers that were uh, distributed for use in uh, Oshun. Okay, that, that's, that's impressive, Dr. Ashiru, because um, when people have been complaining uh, across social media, of course, that uh, the card readers didn't work at some point, uh, what's your views to that? Well, I, I think that the director of uh, voter education had said it all. Um, INEC is upping the game at each exercise. There's no doubt about that, you know. And like he said, I don't think that at this election uh, there were pervasive failure of card readers. I don't think so. I've not heard that. So to that extent, I want to urge them to continue to improve on the technology. The example about, you know, putting your credit card or ATM card in an ATM machine. Yes, you have luxury of time. During election time, we don't have that luxury. So that may not be a good example. I think that the strong point which he made is the fact that, I mean, there are backups. And wherever there, are, there were complaints, you know, immediately they were attacked. So I think that that solves that problem. What's your first Yes, I, well, I want to say that uh, INEC actually improved the process this time. And I want to say kudos to them. Uh, except that uh, you find that in some of the other polling booths in the town, uh, only one uh, uh, reader, electronic reader, is available in some of the polling booths, which makes it difficult for the process to go smoothly. Uh, obviously, if there are two or three uh, card readers in one, it will, it will be a faster process. Because like the reports that came out of the, those who are on the field, uh, an average of five to seven minutes for one voter is not good enough for the readers before you do all your process and you vote. An average of five. But if there are more uh, deployments of uh, maybe two per polling unit or three per polling unit, you can have most of the staff, ad hoc staff, tackling this matter faster than what they have done now, which will introduce efficiency into the process. So that's my own observation about it. Let's get back to Abuja and uh, uh, discuss with uh, Dr. Osazi because at this point, uh, the report that we have is that INEC is working together very closely with the security agencies, the police to be specific, to try to see that uh, uh, elections, whatever, be it Oshun state elections or even looking towards the 2019 general elections, is done in a such a manner that security doesn't, uh, is not a concern for anybody. But uh, tell us to this time, how well have you worked? in Oshun State when we are getting this information from our correspondents they are saying that uh, the security was exceptional uh, according to to Chris Evans where he monitored in Ife. What did you do and how did you collaborate with the police to get such impressive results? Let me before answering that I'll come to that in the in the, in the GFI but quickly just to respond to what Dr. Lale had said um, to have several um, card readers in each polling unit. The resources are not there for a general election to provide they have over 100 and, about 123,000 polling units. The resources are not there to provide card readers in each and every polling unit. But it's important to know that each card reader is configured to that particular unit. We don't want to configure two, three card readers to that particular unit, so, so not to subject them to uh, abuse. So we must configure one, and if that one begins to fail, we quickly reconfigure another one to that uh, particular uh, unit. It's important to make that point. But we have said, and we take criticisms very, very seriously. Seriously in the sense that we try to learn, especially when it, uh, criticisms are constructive, why don't you improve upon the process? So within the law, we try to improve on every aspect of the process as we can. There are certain things within our purview, there are certain things that are outside our purview. INEC is not a security agency. It's, a, it's an election management agency. Security concerns it in the sense that security impacts on the management of the elections. But there are bodies like the police, the police is a lead agency, that are statutory and constitutionally uh, responsible 
for securing everything, including the electoral process. And the best way is to create a synergy. And you're aware. Uh, Again, but there is an interagency consultative committee on electoral security. The national level, chaired by the uh, national security advisor uh, and the uh, chairman of INEC as co-chairman, at the state level, is chaired by the uh, commissioner of police and the resident electoral commissioner of INEC. And even at the local government we, uh, level, we also have the architecture spreads up to the local government level. So there must be synergy. It's not just the police, but the police are the lead agency. You have everybody from the NDLEA to the uh, prisons, to the immigration, to NSDC, so many bodies, any, all the major paramilitary and uh, security agencies are involved in this process. And basically, it's to say, look, you have the responsibility to keep the peace. You have the responsibility to enforce the uh, law. We don't. You have the responsibility to investigate where there are breaches of the law. Now, if it's an offense under the Electoral Act, the Commission can prosecute. So after arrest, after investigation, pass the case files on to us and we'll prosecute. But there are certain things that are offenses under the Electoral Act and also under the Criminal Code. If you want to prosecute under the Criminal Code, then the agencies charged with that responsibility will do so. But if it's under the uh, Electoral Act, then we will do so. So basically, there must be enforcement, uh, increased use of, uh, of, of, of investigative techniques and, uh, and uh, information gathering, intelligence gathering, because, uh, and then voter education, because we think and believe that you also need voter education to enlighten the people. Some people do things out of ignorance, but ignorance of the law is not a defense to uh, most, almost all criminal uh, offenses. So it's a combination of tools that we're using, but there's greater synergy, greater synergy between the electoral management body and the security agencies led by the police. I think you're getting a lot of kudos from uh, across board, but uh, we must ask you to keep it up. Uh, I must thank you also for talking to me here on the show. Oluwole Osazeuzi, the INEC Director of Voter Education and Publicity. Many thanks indeed so much for talking to us from our Abuja studios. Also, Dele Ashiro, uh, doctor, of course, uh, lecturer, uh, political science at the University of Lagos, and Dele Olaleye, also a lawyer. De Deji Olaleye. My apologies, Deji Olaleye, also a lawyer. I must thank all thank of you. Thank you very much. Uh, talking it's a to pleasure to be here. On this. We're going to go on a short break. When we return, we'll have more from Oshobo. Join us again.